in 1996, a beacon of hope came about a decade later uh, in this really seminal paper called Unreliable Failure Detectors for Reliable Distributed Systems. And what this set out to do is give us a practical solution to consensus. Uh, and it doesn't overturn the FLP result, but it does give us the ability to get machines to agree in a practical, realistic way so that we can solve problems and like build real systems, which is why we're all here today. Uh, this paper is also really important. It has won a Dijkstra Award in uh, Distributed Computation. And this paper, or this prize, is only awarded to papers that have uh, proven that they've had a decade of impact. So this is a really important paper that we're going to talk about now. So yeah, it took us a decade to come with some plausible solution of something that we thought it was impossible. And the paper tells us that they believe that unreliable mm -hmm. failure detectors can be used to bridge the gap between known impossibility results and the need for practical solutions for fault tolerant asynchronous systems. So let's break this down again. Uh, <laughs> it's a little, it's a, it's a lot. So they introduced this abstraction called failure detectors. And then uh, they told us that with this abstraction called failure detectors, we can just go from what we thought it was impossible to something that is practical and we can use on a day-to-day -day basis. So the, 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 the key thing about failure detectors is that no longer they have to be perfect. They can actually get it wrong some of the time. And you, we can work within the bounds of the internet of asynchronous systems to create solutions that are practical and are usable. Uh, OK, so like I said, this paper is really important because it introduces this abstraction of failure detectors. Up until this point, the literature had basically tried to define or detect failure within the confines of the system or based on the implementation. Uh, there was a previous paper that is referenced in this one that defined, I think, 38 partially synchronous networks and then tried to solve consensus in all of them. Uh, and that sounds pretty terrible, and I never want to do that. So I'm really glad this paper came out. Uh, but the idea here is we decoupled the implementation from like what we're trying to do so then we can solve uh, problems and algorithms using this, and then you can go and implement your failure detector with the, the definition of correctness that you need. So they define it in terms of two main properties, that's completeness um, and accuracy. And completeness is this idea that you know, if a process crashes, uh, eventually some network or system in the, or some other node in the system detects it. And accuracy is this idea is that we're acknowledging that it doesn't have to be perfect, and we're just going to bound the number of mistakes that the system can make. All right. So as Katie mentioned, we went from 38 possible flavors of how awful is the world <laughs> to eight that the authors describe in this paper. And then again, they split it into like the properties that deal with accuracy. And accuracy has four main categories, according to them. And then completeness has two main categories, according to them. So let's talk a little bit about them. So completeness means uh, it has two flavors. We have strong and weak. And strong means that eventually every process that crash is suspected by every process that hasn't crashed, that is completely, that is strong completeness. And weak completeness means something different. It means that every process that crashes is suspected eventually, but some process, like not necessarily, we don't have to do all of the processes that are correct, have to suspect it, just some of them is good enough. When it comes to accuracy, it's a little bit different. So the accuracy, spe accuracy spectrum deals with how much mistakes, how many mistakes we can get about this suspicion. So we have things that are eventually weak, means that uh, no mistakes, that the sum of some mistakes are made, and then we go all the way to strong, where it's like absolutely no mistakes can be made. So in the strong column, we have something that is called perfect. And as you may have guessed, uh, we don't live in a perfect world. But we had been in that side trying to create solutions that assumed that the world was perfect. The nice thing about this paper, or the thing that was like more mind-blowing, or the most mind-blowing thing about this paper, is that they tell us that things that are weak by definition, things that can get it wrong, are strong enough, are, are good enough to even solve consensus. So the thing that we were told in the 80s that we couldn't do still applies, we know. But like now we know that there's something else that allows us to solve this problem of consensus in a more realistic way. So we can make some mistakes, and we can still make progress after the system went in this period of chaos whenever it stabilizes it. So we can make progress, and we can build systems now. Yay. <laughs> 